This is Twit. So, Jim, we have a lot of science to talk about, but I have to bring up something. So I think the second encounter I had with you was in 2015-ish. Uh-oh. I was working at Caltech. I was writing there. And we got this big, long memo. I think it was nine pages or something from NASA headquarters about how we should discuss The Martian, the movie The Martian. And you were the scientific consultant on that. And I think I wrote you an email saying, can you tell me more about this inciting incident of this non-existent 200 mile an hour wind that would be kind of a, a breath to a feather on Mars threatening to blow over the spacecraft and they took off and you said something, the effect of, well, they didn't listen to everything I said. <laughs> yeah, that was really a, 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 a another accident in my life, so to speak. If you th- if you think my early career was made up of one accidental uh, occurrence after another, um, uh, I was head of planetary, and in the, in that group had three branches. One of the branch was the Mars Exploration Branch. Okay, this was run by Doug McQuistian. And and that branch, uh, that 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 person that leads that branch is commonly called the Mars Czar. <clears throat> now, <laughs> why why we call that person the Mars Czar is that that he or she, in this case, it was Doug, uh, and Doug oversaw every asset at Mars. You know, in terms of how they're coordinating, how they're do what they're doing, uh, how we have to move satellites to get imaging in certain areas, how we have to support l- landings or or getting other spacecraft into orbit, uh, uh, how we do relays, everything. So that's why that person, that one person, is called the Mars Czar. Prior to Doug, it was um, or- Orlando Figueroa, and prior to Orlando, it was um, uh, Scott Hubbard. But. Uh, what happened after we land Curiosity, that, you know, and Andy Weir was developing the, the novel, et cetera, Doug retired. And so I was now acting Marsar. So I was doing all the Mars stuff and I was doing all the other planetary stuff, you know. And so I was working like 16 hours a day. It was terrible. I hadn't worked so hard, you know, to to get keep everything going while I'm trying to hire somebody uh, to, to be the Marsar. In the meantime, Ridley Scott calls up NASA headquarters and says, I want to talk to somebody that knows something about Mars. <laughs> so they must have gone down the phone book and they said, OK, here's the here's the Mars exploration uh, branch. Jim Green acting here. Get, call him. <laughs> so Ridley Scott, you know, calls me and uh, didn't hadn't read the book. Uh, and and the call was arranged by uh, Bolt, Bert, Bert Ulrich. Uh, 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 everything goes through Bert uh, at that time for for uh, media, whether it's music or film or documentaries. Right. And um, uh, so Bert uh, set it up, which was wonderful. <clears throat> and I had a wonderful conversation. By the time I got done with the conversation of talking to Ridley and about five or six of these other people about Mars, I mean, all we did was talk Mars facts, talk about propulsion, uh, everything from ion engines to spacesuits to, you know, uh, 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 walking on Mars, uh, you, you name it, they were all over the place. And there were a couple Couple things I couldn't answer, and I said, I, 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 I don't want to mislead you. I don't know the exact answer to that, but I know who does. Okay, so we'll 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 make those connections. And so before the before the conference was over, he'd already emailed me the script. Okay, <laughs> so this was like Wednesday or Thursday. Okay, and on Monday there was a big meeting uh, in the communication group where they were going to talk about what they were going to do relative to this movie. So uh, I thought, okay, I better read the book. So I got an ebook. So that weekend, I read the script and read the ebook. Monday, I walk in and sit down to the big meeting where we're going to talk about what NASA should do relative to the Martian. So uh, NASA gets, you know, a couple hundred requests for for support on all kinds of things from documentaries to movies. And so they have to be picky. They can only do so much. And so they're wanting around the room. What about this documentary? What about this? And then they came to me and they said, Jim Green, what do you think we should do about the Martian? And I said, we need to be all in whatever really wants. <laughs> we need to make sure he gets it. 
<laughs> this, is, this is fantastic. Ridley wants to make it as realistic as possible. You know, it, 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 we can't have a better opportunity to tell the public the look and feel of, of the red planet. And it all went like this. And then David Weaver, the head of communication, says, great, we'll do that, and you're going to lead it. And I'm oh, Jesus, oh, God. You know, I'm already working 16 17 hours, hours a day. day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 18, 19. We should, we should so, remind people for, like, the, the three people who are listening who don't know what The Martian actually is. It's a, it's a film starring Matt Damon as a stranded astronaut, a real one. Rod, a real stranded astronaut on yes. Mars. On Mars, uh, this is after really an stranded. This is what we mean by stranded. Yeah, that's right. Um, based on a yeah. book by by Andy Rear. Uh, well, uh, well, well, and interestingly, <laughs> that book was originally just fan fiction published online. Yeah, and it just took mm -hmm. off like crazy. Self published. Jim, self published. Jim, I have to tell yeah. you, I think you might remember this because we're of a similar age. I I left the Martian, and I was kind of satisfied, but I felt after I'd seen the movie, I thought I've seen this before. And I went home and loaded up my laser disc of yeah. Robinson Crusoe on Mars <laughs> and reminded myself that the first two thirds of that movie was great. And then when the creepy aliens show up and it got kind of weird, but it did, there was a, a similarity there. Okay. Sorry, Tarek. I know it's, well, no, I was going to, I was going to say though, uh, and, and, and Jim, I think that the enthusiasm was not just warranted, but it really comes clear because if, if our audience doesn't, doesn't recall oh the Martian God. came out, uh, as as kind of like the third film in a trifecta of like real space based films, you had Gravity, yeah. which was Sandra Bullock stuck on the yep. space station after it gets destroyed by space debris. Yep. Uh, you have Interstellar uh, about you know a dying Earth and we have to find another <laughs> planet. And in both of those films, Gravity, we've talked about this before, Rod and I. Uh, Gravity and and Interstellar, they don't want to be in space. No one wants to be in space. In fact, Sandra Bullock says. That she hates space, but in The Martian, that spirit that I have seen, uh, and I'm sure you have too, right, Jim, uh, from the astronauts and the scientists you talk about, uh, about there, there was they would still be there. That they he loves being oh, on yeah. Mars, even though oh, he's yeah. stuck there. It was the oh, first yeah. one where the joy I think that I see uh, yeah. from folks like yourself who right. do the science from the astronauts. Right really came through and i think that, that that needs to be celebrated just a little bit more especially these yeah, days well well <laughs> I, I got a couple things to tell you about that because my my absolute favorite scene in the movie is when he's sitting on the rock and mm -hmm. he's composing in his mind the letter he's writing to commander lewis and uh i went back to the script because i didn't i didn't remember everything that that he said was in the script and it wasn't he you know, he, uh, whether it was uh, Ridley or or he just let Matt riff a little, actually added some really nice parts to that. Uh, and so so that when when he sits there and talks that way, it almost a tear comes to my eye, you know. Uh, so uh, uh, that's the drive he had, you know, mm -hmm. he, he said he may die on Mars and I am okay with that because yeah. of what it means uh, to explore in this manner and why we need to be on Mars to continue to do so. So it was, it was a wonderful experience and, and, and uh, I had a wonderful time doing it and, um, and it about killed me, but uh, that's the way that went. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the premiere. They invited me to go to the premiere. Oh, that's so Ridley, <laughs> Ridley calls up NASA headquarters and says, I want Jim to come to the premiere. I'm going to send a plane for him. And NASA headquarters went, Bazook, you're not going to send a private plane for him. He's going <laughs> to sit in economy on some jet. You know, and then and then Ridley said, Well, we've got this hotel in Toronto. It's a Toronto Film Festival. So the can of the of the Americas is the Toronto Film Festival. Okay. That's when it's all shown. And and he says, We're in this hotel. I'll put him up in this hotel. It's way over per diem. He can't possibly be in that hotel. You know, so they put me in this hotel, you know, miles away because everybody's there, you know, at the premiere. So, the, uh, you know, the premiere was great. You know, uh, uh, it, I had to walk the red carpet. That was shocking. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even wearing my best suit. You know, <laughs> they, they all tell me these things, right? And then uh, we uh, we uh, spent the rest of the day, the next day, rather, uh, uh, talking to reporters. And I was on panels with Ridley and panels with with uh, um, 
uh, with Andy Weir, uh, talked to Matt in the hallway, and you know, just had a just had a great time.